The Texas legislature votes on thousands of bills every session, and because there are so many, the public doesn't always have a chance to learn about them all, even the ones they should. That's why we've asked a few state lawmakers to join us here at TPPFHQ to talk about their most important legislation so that you can stay on top of the issues. This is The Layout. James Quintero, Policy Director for the Government for the People campaign. And today I'm joined by Senator Mays Middleton. Senator, welcome to The Layout. Thank you. Today we're going to be discussing Senate Bill 175, a bill to eliminate taxpayer-funded lobbying, an issue that I know is near and dear to your heart. Senator, can you tell us a little bit about the problem here and what it is that we're trying to solve? So the ban on taxpayer-funded lobbying is the first bill that I always file. It was the first bill that I filed when I got elected to the House and the first bill that I filed when I got elected to the Senate. And the reason why this is so important is taxpayers' own dollars are being used against them to hire lobbyists. So this Congress Avenue Austin lobbyists that then lobby against taxpayers. And it's worse than that. They're actually using parents' tax dollars to go lobby against parents and what's in the best interest of our kids as well. Wow. So tell us a little bit about the bill. How, how would it work? So it's pretty simple. Uh, really, all it does, it says public money. So that's money collected from taxpayers. Cannot go to registered Austin-based lobbyists. Also, public money cannot go to an association that primarily represents government and has registered lobbyists. This is all about the hired gun lobbyists. This bill is not about local government employees or local government elected officials going to Austin. That is still all allowed. You do not have to register to lobby at all to do that. Uh, this is simply going after registered hired gun Austin lobbyists who are frankly lobbying against what taxpayers want to see done. I mean, it's, it's one of the reasons why we've had such a hard time passing property tax relief in the state of Texas is we have taxpayer funded lobbyists opposing property tax relief. Yikes. Well, so tell me a little bit about what you expect uh, in terms of benefits for the average person if this bill were to be passed. Well, we're going to get a lot more good things done for the taxpayer and for parents uh, because they're not having to pay for the opposition anymore that's against them. Um, and this also saves a lot of money. It's a pro-taxpayer bill because about $41 million a year right now of property tax money is being diverted to the pockets of, of Austin lobbyists. So we shouldn't be spending that. Uh, and I, why do we need a middleman? You know, we don't need a middleman. We don't need someone between local government and your state elected officials. That's our job to represent our communities directly. Um, so it's, you know, it works the other way too. It's, and the state government is not advocating uh, to send registered lobbyists to commissioner's courts or city councils or school board meetings because we know that's our job. That's what we like to do to keep track of what's going on in local government. It works the other way around as well. We don't need these middlemen. Mm -hmm. Now, one of, the, one of the criticisms that we've heard from the other side is, of course, you know, if a bill like this were to pass, it would prevent local officials from coming to Austin to share their views and their opinions on legislation. How would you respond to that criticism? Well, it doesn't at all. It actually, I think this bill increases the voice of our constituents, the people that elected us, including our local elected officials, because they're not having to compete against an army of Austin lobbyists anymore, right? Because, you know, whether it's someone that cares about a, a property tax bill or even someone local government, like one of my county commissioners in Brazoria County does not like solar tax abatements. Well, you know what? They're not having to compete anymore against someone that's paid to lobby against what they believe in. And frankly, when they're here, they're not being paid to do that. They're here because they believe in it. So it's really, it's an unfair practice. It's not right. Uh, it's an immoral practice. And this has no impact whatsoever uh, on local government making their voice heard. Uh, it does not prohibit that. It is 100% allowed and continues to be allowed. Even if this bill passes, What's going to happen? We're going to see a lot more people in local government come to Austin. We're going to see a lot more people that work for local government come to Austin because you're not required to register to lobby, even if they're reimbursing you for travel expenses or other expenses related to coming to Austin. All of that is, is perfectly allowed. 
Uh, it's just the bill prohibits registered hostile lobbyists. That's all it does. And last question, Senator, how can Texans help in this effort? So we want everyone to come make their voice heard. Uh, actually, this morning I got a uh, resolution from the city of League City uh, supporting the ban on taxpayer-funded lobbying. We actually have a lot of local government uh, supporting the ban on taxpayer-funded lobbying. Galveston County called me and said they want to do a resolution in support. Uh, last session, you know, the Collin County judge stayed up till probably four in the morning uh, to support the bill. And now more recently, I have a lot of school board members that want to support the ban on taxpayer-funded lobbying because they're tired of the taxpayer-funded lobbying groups being anti-parent and anti-student. I mean, you saw uh, Texas Association of School Boards, they actually integrated critical race theory into their statement of beliefs. Uh, Taxpayer-funded lobbyists have, have opposed the Protect Girls Sports Bill, you know, which is making sure that boys don't play girls sports. And, and the other day, which is really the most egregious, is there was a legal memo uh, from a taxpayer-funded lobby group, Texas Association of School Boards, that really, frankly, encourages boys uh, to go into girls' restrooms. Mm. Um, and, and it's sad that that's what we're paying for. And that's why it's so important to ban this practice. Indeed. Senator, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, James. I appreciate it.